Hi, I'm Paul Friedman, founder of the Marriage Foundation, and I put together this mini marriage counseling series in order to help people whose marriages are not on the brink. They're for people who are having difficulty in their marriage. I've written two books, Breaking the Cycle and Lessons for Happy Marriage, and for people whose marriages are absolutely failing, you could always take one of our courses which are guaranteed and phenomenal in terms of helping you. But so many people have smaller issues or issues that can easily be responded to that you shouldn't have to pay money to learn how to do it. And don't forget, at the Marriage Foundation, we also offer the free service to anyone who has a marriage problem. You just write in to one of our counselors and, you, and you'll get an answer uh, fairly quickly about what you can do. And oftentimes, it's not going to mean you have to read one of the books or take a course. There's an answer. So, in oh yes, in the Marriage Foundation is nonprofit, but we're not connected to any religion. We're not connected to any political organization. I started this because when I was speaking at Second Saturday support groups for women who are getting divorced, one of my fellow past divorce mediators, I used to be a divorce mediator, said, Paul, these teachings have to go. Here's a thousand bucks, start a nonprofit. I said, okay, Robert, I wasn't gonna argue with him. He's a Navy, ex-Navy SEAL. So that's why we have the foundation. This is an altruistic endeavor to get people into having a successful marriage. Now, one of the big, one of the big things that we get, and I say big because it's overwhelming, is what do I do? My husband cheated on me, he doesn't anymore and I sure hope you took the course if that happened. But I, I don't feel love for him anymore. It seems, seems to be fading away. What happened to the love? And how do I get it back? And this is a very deep philosophical question because we're talking about love. And love, there is nothing deeper than love. And philo philosophical? I mean, what's <laughs> poetry and novels and life is all about love. So I'm going to give you an education here. This is sort of the education that I had that allowed me to put all of this together because I've been meditating since 1972 for a couple of, at least a couple of hours every single day with the single intention of experiencing love. So let's get right into this. Because if you don't understand love, you're not going to get it. So I said we're a non-religious organization, means we're not tied to any religion. Doesn't mean we're not spiritual. I consider myself to be spiritual. I consider you to be spiritual. We're all spiritual. Why? Because we're triune beings. You have a body. You have a mind, but what are you? You are a soul. And what is a soul? A soul is love. So many people, you could even look in the dictionary, look up love, and you know what it's gonna tell you? A lot, a lot of like, <laughs> it's like, and, I'm, and I don't very much like that description because it's inaccurate. Love is its own thing. Love, in reality, is God, and God is love. And the great prophets who come to our rescue embody love. So they're an example for us to follow. It doesn't mean we follow them like, you know, Jonestown, but we follow in their footsteps to achieve love. So this is very, this is actually very interesting because you can't put it into a test tube. So the love that you want in your marriage that you used to have, 
has to be broken down. So emotional love is not really love. Emotional love is that elevated like, but it comes as a, as a way of priming the pump so that you could experience love. Remember, you're the soul. So here you are as a soul, and thinly wrapped around that is your mind. And thinly wrapped around your soul is your body. And you might say that as a soul, this I know it gets a little complicated, but stay with me. As a soul, the experience of life is experienced through the mind, but interfered with by the body. We have an animal body. The body is an animal body. And the animal body is driven by drives. And the number one drive, and all the other drives are subordinate to it, is the drive to survive. You learned this in school in biology. I hope they're still teaching this. The drive to survive is found in the smallest or the most complex forms of life. It's innate in every cell. Every cell innately is the drive to survive. And this drive to survive is telling the mind what to do. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. Do that. Protect us. The drive to survive has no intelligence like we do. We have free will. All it knows is survive, survive, survive. But we are not the mind. We are the soul. And you might say the whole effort of life is to infuse the mind with soul, which is love. So the love is the constant. But the reason why we don't feel the love all the time is because the mind, which is controlled by the body's drive, is sort of like putting your hand up when the sun is bright. There's this huge sun. I mean, it's so big, it's ridiculous. And one little hand can block its light and its heat. Just a hand. So imagine how the mind can block it. Now, we're going to get to the question of how do I get this love back? But if you don't understand what love is, how are you going to get what you don't know what it is, right? Because the emotional love is just not that big a deal. Yeah, you want to feel the love, but you don't have to feel it in your emotions. You see, as a soul, the soul is feeling. It is. It's the feeling of only love, in fact. And because you are essentially a soul, it never has left. So let's move this out of the way. And let's see this a little different. So you're the soul, but you're experiencing life as a mind. And what you really want is to feel this. So here's how you do it. Because the love never went away. It can't go away. As a soul, you have free will. This free will allows you to control the mind. You have all the switches and knobs 
to control the mind. But you have turned those switches over to the body's drives. So you can't create love, but you already are love. And you go, well, I want to feel love for my husband. Yeah, you'll feel it. How? The thing about love is that using your free will, you chisel away the mind so that the love flows into it and infuses it, and there's only one way to do it, which is fascinating. The one way to experience love is by giving it. I'm not saying if you give it, it'll come back to you. That's not what I'm saying. But by giving love, you're infusing the mind with it because the love is coming from the soul. So it's filling the mind as you give it to your husband. So the act of giving love to your husband, which is a free will determination you choose, creates the love in your heart. Oh, I can't do that. He cheated on me. I can't do that. I don't trust him. He, I, don't, I, I can't do that. He's been mean to me. I can't do that. Look how he behaves. This gets very complicated. So who are coming, who's coming up with all of those I can'ts? It's the defensive mind. The defensive mind is the defensive mind because of the drive to survive in the body. The soul is not worried about whether your husband loves you back or not. The soul isn't worried about what he has done. The soul is only love. It's unconditional love. It's only love itself. You are essentially only love yourself, but that love is affected by the mind. You have to break through. So how do you get there from here? For some of you, this alone will do it. For others, <laughs> this whole thing was not set up to sell you the course. But I do have a course. I discovered this. So I wrote two books. I wrote Breaking the Cycle and Lessons for Happy Marriage, which are the how to have a happy marriage. Because if your marriage isn't happy, it's not even a marriage. In my estimation, a marriage is only successful if it's filled with joy, right? You know, it, if you have a refrigerator and the compressor goes and it doesn't refrigerate, it isn't a refrigerator anymore. If you have a marriage, you got married to be happy. If it's not joyous, it's not a marriage. So people need to know what they have to do and what to not do in order for a marriage to be successful. And that's what my two books are for. But some people's marriages have gone so far due to whatever, multiple mistakes or just one big mistake. And they're in this, they're in the weeds and at the bottom of a pit, they can't get out, they can't get their mind straight. So I created this course for those who really need help, step by step by step. And it also includes our counselors. Our counselors are there to serve you, whether you buy anything from the Marriage Foundation or not. It's a free service. If you have a problem, write into our counselors. It's free. 
and then we could show you how to do this. But you can do this right now. What you do simply is you choose to love your husband regardless of anything. You know, it's a very interesting thing. I've shared this with some people recently. No one's ever thought of this before. As children, we all get unconditional love to one degree or another from our mothers. I say one degree or another because there are some mothers who are messed up. But that unconditional love is a natural state for motherhood. Nature built it in. By connecting the soul more to the woman than to men. It's natural. And a mother gives unconditional love to protect and support and love her child who would die without it. And as human beings in our subconscious mind, we're used to getting this. And because the subconscious mind is primarily driven by the drive to survive, it becomes an expectation. But as spiritual beings, we should turn that around and we should go, why am I getting unconditional love as a child? And the answer is so we learn how to give it. And when do we give it? When we get married, we give it. Unconditional love. That means with no expectations of anything in return. And that's how you do it. So the short answer is the love never went away, but it's been blocked by your mind's survival drives. And you overcome it by ignoring it and learning to love unconditionally. And that's it. <laughs> so if you like this, share it. Like it, share it, subscribe. We love you. Want to see you again.